So yesterday we worked on like kind of fairly basic Newton's second law problems. Okay? And we're just going to kind of keep building on that as we go along. Right? Uh, we're going to look at like more complex vector problems. We're going to look at today systems. Okay? All the questions we've done up until now had only one mass that was being moved. Okay? Um, by definition, a system is more than one mass. Okay? So this would be a very simple system consisting of two masses. Right? And so we need to look at kind of how that works in terms of Newton's second law. So if I can get you to copy this one down, this is going to be our first Newton's second law in a system problem. So before we go into solving this problem, okay, we want to kind of gain an understanding or have some image in our mind of how this system would work. Right, so we're starting out, we've got a 20 kilogram block, and it's tied to a 10 kilogram block by a string. Okay, and that string is taut, okay, so there's no slack. Okay, and then there's, a, there's another string tied to the 10 kilogram block that's being used to pull. When the person pulls on this string, What's going to happen to the blocks? They're going to accelerate. Yeah. I mean, as long as they pull hard enough to overcome friction, right? They're going to accelerate. Will they accelerate at the same rate? Well, it has one mass, so. Well, they will. They're attached. They're, they're attached. They have to. Okay? Think about this, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen this on the highway, but sometimes they have. Uh, like semi-truck B trains. Okay, a B train is a semi-truck that's got a trailer and then another trailer attached to the first trailer behind. Okay, that's a B train. When that truck moves, do the two trailers accelerate at the same rate? It would be really, really bad if they didn't because that would mean one of them comes off or passes the other one. And that, I haven't seen it happen. And just in my experience, that hasn't happened. Okay, from my knowledge of physics, that won't happen because they're connected. They're a system. And all parts of a system have to accelerate at the same rate because they're, they're attached. If they don't, they'll have to separate. Okay? Does everyone kind of follow me there? All right. So um, the, what we have to understand about a system is that all parts of the system will have the same acceleration. The forces acting on the individual parts can be different, and they have to be, because these parts of the system, as Tegan pointed out, have different masses. Okay? So the forces acting on them are going to be different. But their accelerations have to be the same. Which means I can actually treat them separately or combined. Because if they have the same acceleration, they're really just 30 kilograms. If I'm looking at it from the system point of view. Okay. If the question gives me information about individual parts, well, then I can break it down into individual parts and analyze it that way. But if I want to save myself time, I can treat this system as though it's all one mass because it moves that way. It all moves together. When that person pulls on that rope, they're not pulling 10 kilograms. They're pulling 30. Exactly. Right? So in this question, they say it's of identical material. It's connected by a light rope. An applied force of 55 newtons causes the blocks to accelerate. While in motion, the magnitude of the force of friction on the block system, okay, so that's the whole thing, is 44.1 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the blocks. All right, so really then, I can simplify this and just say 30 kilograms is being pulled this way by 55 newtons, okay, and this way by 44.1 newtons. Because that's really, in a nutshell, what's happening. All right. So what would my next step be if I want to calculate the acceleration of the blocks? Then you add up the forces and right. divide them by the mass. Right. First I'm going to do the vector sum of all forces. You're right. Okay. I've got to find the net force. All right. So that's going to be 55. Uh, minus 44.1, or plus negative 44.1, however you want to look at it. All right, so we're looking at 10.9 there, right? Yeah. All right, 
So we got 10.9 newtons forward. All right, now I've got the net force. Acceleration is F net divided by mass. What mass do I divide by? 30. This is the, this is the forces acting on the whole system, so I need to divide by the mass of the entire system. Keith, question? Uh, would you have to account for uh, the force of gravity? No. Good question. I don't have to account for the force of gravity in my um, sum of all forces because the force of gravity and the normal force cancel each other on each block. So technically I could write them in, but why? Right? Because they cancel each other off. I don't need them. They're not really contributing to the net force. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then divide that by 30 kilograms. What does that come out to you guys? 10.9 over 30. It comes out to 0 0.34. Point three six. Yeah. Okay, because we have two significant digits. So point three six meters per second squared. Four. Okay. Now, if it were me asking this question, I would give you all of that same information, and then instead of saying calculate the acceleration of the blocks, I would say calculate the acceleration of the ten kilogram block. Would that change what you do? No. Nope. But you'd be surprised how many people I would catch with that. What would the mistake people would make be? You just subtract your what you got by the what you got by the They wouldn't subtract the difference. Yeah. They divide instead of by thirty, they divide by ten. Because I said I want the acceleration of the ten kilogram block. And people would divide by ten. Okay? Remember, this is the whole system we're dealing with. Okay? I'm accelerating 30 kilograms worth of mass. The 10 kilogram mass has the same acceleration as the whole system. All parts of the system accelerate equally. And that's where these questions can get a little more complex. Sometimes it'll ask about one of the masses, but not give you enough information to calculate stuff about that mass. So you have to calculate it about the other part of the system, knowing that that part's acceleration is the same as the part they asked about. Okay? And that's, you know, as long as we understand that, it's not too bad a question. It can get even hairier if it's a pulley. One of them might be going down and the other might be going up. But their acceleration's magnitude is still the same. Okay? I can't have one box on a pulley accelerating faster than the box that's pulling it. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? Right? They have to do the same thing. Okay, um, I want you guys to try number one. Okay, it's two buckets of nails, and they're being pulled upward. They're connected, so it's two pails, okay, and the pails are connected by a rope, and the top pail is being pulled. Okay, that's the situation here. Right? I want you guys to see if you can do that one, and then we'll walk through it. Okay. All right, so they're telling me I've got these two buckets of nails, okay, so, and they're connected by a rope, okay, each one of them um, is five kilograms. All right, they tell me the tension in the rope connecting the buckets is 60 newtons, so that means that's the force, that's how, how tight that rope is. And that means, because tension is in a rope, that it actually acts in two directions. It's pulling down on the bu bucket above and pulling up on the bucket below. Okay? So, 60 newtons. Now, there's obviously a, uh, another rope here with a force, but they don't tell me what it is. Okay? Um, what other forces might be involved here? Gravity. Okay. Would gravity be acting on both buckets? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple of ways to do this, but the most correct way would be to use what you're given as opposed to extrapolating for things that may or may not be true. Okay. The way I would do this is to go about with what I know. These two buckets are attached. Do they have the same acceleration? 
So if, that, if I can find the acceleration of only one of them, I can apply it to the whole system, yes? Okay, how much information do I have about the top bucket? I have the mass, and that's it. And I can calculate the force of gravity acting down on the top bucket if I wanted to. But that doesn't really help me. I don't have much information about the top bucket. So I'm going to get rid of the top bucket. And I'm going to treat this as though there's only the bottom bucket. Okay, and I'm going to go 5 times 9.81, and that's going to be 49.5. Okay, so there's my force of gravity, and there's my upward force on the bottom bucket. Can I calculate the net force on the bottom bucket? Oh, I went 5 times 9.81. Sorry. This is the force of gravity. Okay, so I just went M times G. Okay. All right, so now I've got the two forces, because that's it. Those are the only two forces acting on the bottom bucket. The force in the, in the rope pulling up and the force of gravity acting down. So now I can do vector sum of all forces. Okay, and say, all right, 60 minus 49.05 can leave me with 10.95, yeah? Newton's. Okay, can I calculate the acceleration of the bottom bucket? What else can I apply that acceleration to? The top bucket? both buckets, the whole system too, right? It applies to all parts of the system and the system as a whole, right? So I'm using one part of the system to figure out something else about the other parts of the system or the whole system. And often system questions work that way. Go with me. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to take my um, Newton's second law, F, F equals m times a, and manipulate for a. So that's going to be 10.95 divided by 5. And, and that should give me 2.2, right? Meters per second squared up. That is the acceleration of the bottom bucket, the top bucket, both buckets. Okay? So there is a lot more intuitive stuff going on with Newton's second law than we've done thus far. Okay? I really have to examine a situation and break it down and go, okay, what's really going on here? What's pulling on this? What's pushing on that? Okay? And, and kind of go from there. Sometimes I have to do it as a whole. Sometimes I have to break it down into parts and you know, isolate them. That's, that's what gets complex. Remember I said, we're going to spend like half the unit on Newton's second law. It was F equals M times A. This is why. Sure, I used F equals M times A here, but I had to do a lot of stuff just in my own head before I could get to that. And that's the challenge with most physics going forward. It's all the stuff you have to figure out in your head. Mathematically, physics is not very challenging. That's why I can do it. Okay? I'm not a particularly strong mathematician. Okay? In fact, I can't believe I just applied that word to myself because um, I'm totally not. Uh, but it's all the intuitive stuff, to being able to see how things work or understand how things work that can make you good at physics. Some of my best physics students have not been really good at math, but they just have a good understanding of how things work. Okay. All right, for question number two, it's going back to this situation. Okay, so all the stuff we, we calculated before still applies. Right, so um, if we go back to that, we calculated that the acceleration was 0.36 meters per second squared forward. So that number also still applies here. Okay, so in question number two, they're telling you that the force of friction on the 10 kilogram block is 14.7 newtons. The total friction was 44.1 newtons. Okay? They want you to calculate the tension in this rope, the rope that's connecting the two blocks. Okay? Don't do B. What's the answer to B? 55. 55. I have 
no idea why they asked that. They told you what the tension in the rope was between the hand and the 10 kilogram block. It makes no sense to ask you what it is when they told you what it is. Okay, so what you're looking for is this rope. Now, are you going to be treating this as a whole or are you going to be breaking it down into parts? You got to break this one down. Not, and here's the thing, you can solve this with either block. Okay, you can solve this problem with either block. You can choose the 20 or the 10. Either one will get you that tension. Here, we'll wash my hands. All right, give me a little bit of time on that one, guys. This one, again, it's not mathematically difficult. It's intuitively challenging. So my suggestion is this. Pick a block. Draw a free body diagram for that block, and then go for it. Once you have a free body diagram for either block, okay, I think the solution will be pretty evident. Okay, I can pick either block, okay, but here's what people miss. They forget that the tension is pulling on the 20 kilogram block. So I'm going to do this both ways. I'm going to do it first with the, with the 10 kilogram block because it's actually easier that way. There's one less calculation with the 10, with the 10 kilogram block. So I draw my free body diagram of the 10 kilogram block. There's 55 newtons forward from the hand that's directly pulling on it. The question tells me there's 14.7 newtons worth of frictional force resisting. What's the other force acting on the first block? The tension from the second block, the thing we're supposed to calculate. That's where people get stuck. They're like, how do I find the tension? I don't even know where it is. Well, it's, it's resisting. It's pulling back on the 10 kilogram block. Okay? Now, probably not a lot of you have done this yet, okay? but if you, if you ever do in your life, tow a trailer with a truck. Okay? It's a lot different than when you're just driving the truck because there's this resistance from behind. It's not friction. It's just the mass that you're pulling along with you. Okay? When you were a kid, you pulled like a wagon. Okay? I don't know if you did that. That doesn't sound like kids anymore. But, okay? like you, like it's easier to run than it is to run pulling a wagon because you've got this extra tension behind you in your arm pulling on this extra mass. So that other force is the force we're looking for. It's the tension in the rope pulling back on the 10 kilogram mass. Okay? So, this is the force I'm looking for. Now, I know the acceleration and I know the mass of that first block. What can I calculate about that first block right now? The net force acting on the first block. Okay? So that's what I want to do. That net is going to equal 0.36 meters per second times 10. Okay, that's going to be 36, or sorry, 3.6, not 36, 3.6 newtons. All right. What's the other way to calculate net force? The vector sum of all forces. Okay, so for the first block, that's going to be um, 55 plus 14.7 plus the tensional force, which is what I'm looking for. Okay. And remember that I know what F net equals. I didn't write it in there, but I know it's 3.6. Can I isolate the one thing I don't know? Okay, here's what's important on this step. 55 is forward. 14.7 is backwards. The 3.6 is forwards. Okay, vector is important on this. All right, so I'm going to isolate that force of tension. Okay, and that's going to mean I'm going to take the net force, I'm going to subtract the 55, I'm going to subtract negative 14.7. So 3.6 minus 55 plus 14.7. That looks like 37 newtons backwards to me. Yes? Okay, it came out negative because from the 10 kilogram box's point of view, that force is back. Everyone okay with that? 
Okay? Tension, actually, if you're asked to calculate it, doesn't have to have a vector. If they just say, what's the tension, you can just write a number because tension acts both ways on the rope. Okay? If it says, what's the force resisting the 10 kilogram mass, then I would have to say it's backwards. Okay? But if you just ask for tension, that's why there's no vector on this. Okay? All right, here's how we do it from the 20 kilogram block point of view. subtract, right? I know the total frictional force on the whole system is 44.1. Okay? I know the force of friction on the first block is 14.7. Okay? So I got to subtract those. What was it? 29.4 newtons. Okay, so 29.4 newtons. Alright, those are the only two forces acting on that last block. The extra step was I had to calculate the force of friction, which I didn't have to do in the other block. Okay. So, now that I've got those, can I calculate the net force acting on that block? M times A. Okay. I mean, how many times have we said in every question, you're going to use both M times A and the vector sum of all forces? You do, basically every single time. So, M times A, so that'll be uh, 20 times 0.36, so that should be uh, 7.2. Yep. 7.2 newtons forward. Okay, and the other way to calculate net force is the vector sum of all forces. So for this one, that's going to be um, our force of friction plus the tensional force. I'm trying to find the tensional force, so that's going to be 7.2 minus negative 29.4. Okay, because I writing forward just because this is the 20 kilogram block, it's pulling it forward. Okay, but again, it's tension. I wouldn't have to write a direction on it. Okay? Alright, is there a lot of analysis that has to go on in your head? A lot. And there's a lot of visualization. Like, you really have to think about how things work to get to the math. I mean, what was the hardest math we did there? Multiplication, yeah, we had to multiply two numbers and then we had to subtract some numbers or add some numbers. Like, there was no hard math in this, okay? What was hard was figuring out what forces are acting on each one of these. What are they causing it to do? How do I get what I need? I got, like, negative 36.13. Would that be close enough to get the answer right? No, because it's, it's not going to round up to 37. So, I, some, did you round off somewhere? Um, yeah. When I got those, well, when I got the, like, the 2.87, this is what I did. I divided the mass by the acceleration, and then I got like 2.7 repeated. 2.7. What? You divided them? Yeah. I went like the F net equals mass divided acceleration. But it's not divided, it's multiplied, that's where you want to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Write this one down. Let's talk about how pulleys work. Okay. okay. So if we're reading this question, it says the two objects are connected by a light rope over a light frictionless pulley. Why are they making such a big deal out of light, light, and frictionless? So we don't take those into account. Right. Because if this if we were doing this like the legitimate way to do it. We would have to include the mass of the rope, because it would be part of the system, the mass of the pulley, because it would also accelerate, because it's going to rotate, okay? And if there was any friction in the pulley, that would be a resisting force within the system. That makes the question a lot more complex than it needs to be. So when they say a light rope and a light pulley and it's frictionless, they're basically saying, imagine it's perfect and none of these things actually are there, okay? It, it, yeah, it just makes our life a little easier. 
So with this situation, what's going to happen here? Yeah, exactly. The 35 kilogram mass is going to fall, and the 25 kilogram mass is going to be pulled up by the rope because it's attached to a fallen mass. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. Is the acceleration of the 35 and 25 kilogram mass going to be the same? Partly. Well, one's going to be negative, one's going to be positive. One's going to be up, one's going to be down. The magnitude has to be the same because they're connected. Okay? I've never seen a mass fly over a pulley and catch the mass that, caught, that was pulling on it. Okay? That doesn't happen. All right? It's gravity, okay? and all things fall at the same rate, so that's not going to happen. All right, um, so let's look at what are the forces acting in this system? Gravity. Gravity. And? Uh, gravity. Yeah. Gravity and gravity are the two forces that are acting. Okay, why do I say gravity twice? Because there's two objects. There's two objects. Okay, so if I wanted to simplify this system, what I would do is eliminate the pulley. Is this really just one mass? It is. Wow. This is really 60 kilograms worth of mass being accelerated. Okay, I realize that's separating the, or that's combining the two things, but that's really what's going on in this system. 60 kilograms worth of mass is going to have to move, and it's going to have the same acceleration. Now, the forces that are acting are, as we said, the force of gravity and the force of gravity. They're opposing each other. Right? So this. is going to be the force of gravity on the 35, and this is going to be the force of gravity on the 25. Okay, so calculate what those two things are. Net force is 98.1 newtons. Can I calculate the acceleration of the pieces? How do I do it? Net force divided by mass. Exactly. F equals m times a. Okay, so we're going to have our 98.1 over 60. Squared. That's the acceleration of the whole thing, of the system. I can only give a magnitude there because the parts go in different directions. Okay? But that's the rate at which they will both accelerate. Now, this says determine the motion of each object once the objects are released. Well, now I would say the 25 kilogram mass is going to accelerate up at 1.6 meters per second squared, and the 35 kilogram mass is going to accelerate down at 1.6 meters per second squared. Okay, so in that one, I treated it as a whole and then applied it to the individual parts, which is the opposite of what we did in the last question where we broke it up into individual parts and applied it to the whole. Okay, and that's what goes on with systems. Sometimes you're breaking it down, sometimes you're putting it all together, okay, as long as you understand 
that the acceleration of the system and all of its parts has the same magnitude. Okay? That's the most important thing you can remember about systems. Try that. So they want the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. So if, can I simplify this if I'm just doing the whole system? Yeah. Absolutely. OK, and I should. I should just write this as though I am dealing with a 34 kilogram mass. Okay, I just combine all the masses, the 8, the 6, and the 20. Okay, so I've got 34 kilograms. The forces that are driving this system are the force of gravity here and the force of gravity here. All right, so pale A, uh, or sorry, yeah, pale B, sorry, has a mass of 8 kilograms. Okay, so the force of gravity on it will be 8 times 9.81. Right, so 78.48. This one on C, and we got 6 times 9.81, right? 58.86. Okay, what can I calculate now? Net force, okay? Vector sum of all forces, all right? So F net is going to be 78.48 minus 58.86, which should be 19.62 newtons. It does, but it's offset by the table. Oh, okay. Right? It's so not within the plane of the okay, movement. So you don't have to yeah. We can recognize that it's there, but because it doesn't contribute anything to the net force, we can ignore it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got our 19.62. Now we calculate the acceleration of the system. 19.62 divided by 34, okay, will give me the acceleration of the system. So 19.62 divided by 34. So this is going to accelerate at 0.58 meters per second squared. Can I put a vector on that? No, nope, I can't. Because pale C is going to move up, pale B is going to move down, and the tire is going to move to the left. You just ignore the tire when you're doing gravity. That's what Brooke just asked. I, gravity is here, for sure but it's offset by the force of the table. So it doesn't contribute to the movement of the tire, right? The, the movement of the system is along this plane and this doesn't affect it, right? Because they cancel out. When I did the vector sum of all forces, I took these two things and went, oh, they add up to zero. I'm going to ignore them. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right, um, so things like that to remember, guys. Okay, it's certainly important. If I was asking this question, how would I try and trick you? Yeah, or the tire, or something like that, and see if I could get you to divide by just the mass of that object instead of the system. Okay? Be on the lookout for that. I don't have a lot of tricks in the bag. Uh, no, because that still implies that there's a direction to it, and I can't because the direction is different for all the parts. 